Well, I know for Halloween, it's the most celebrated holiday for any devil worshiper, any, any Satanist, because this is where they make the most sacrifices towards him. This is like, he loves it. This is like his version of, like his porn. Like he, he, he takes pleasure in seeing this, but, and it, and it, cause it's sacrificed it's towards the way him. It is. It's the way it is. It's the way it is. In Halloween, many kids, many teenagers go missing when they're out trick or treating because there's witches out there, people who worship the devil, they're kidnapping them and they're sacrificing towards the devil. And nobody hears about it. The news reporters don't hear, don't share that. They don't, because they don't want to freak people out. But they're out there, you do your investigation, you do the reports, you're gonna find people who have missing children. And the way, I guess the devil likes to cover it up is that, hey, look, let's dress up. Let's, let's put a bunch of decorations and say, oh, this is just make-believe. Let's make some nice movies about it with good morality about bringing family together while they're out trick-or-treating or something. And that, and it's a, I think there's more history to it that I can't remember correctly, something with the pagans. But as, it has a darker meaning towards it. That's why, there's a reason why they say trick-or-treat. But the trick is, you go treat, you go trick or treating. You're gonna, you're gonna spook yourself out and finding out that there is a devil out there that people are sacrificing people towards. So if when it comes to Halloween, just I recommend don't be part of it. If you're practicing things that the world enjoys, and if the world is God's enemy, then God will see you as His enemy. But if you turn from that, repent, just seek, seek God and His protection. Pray for those around you that are gonna be trick or treating, because the the spiritual warfare that's out there uh, at, at these times of the year is strong. crazy. It's so very strong. strong, very strong, and especially like I, I heard, what did I hear it? I heard it in a video that said like around 11 p.m. or 12 on Halloween. The common window is 3:30 a.m. when like the, the spirits go out and they start chasing after people to spook them or something. But when Halloween, it opens up a lot sooner because they want to really get active and bringing sacrifices towards Satan. You notice how, how in October many people will tell you that there's very strong warfare around them. That just just weird things just happen to them. I don't know where they're like, what the like how did how did this happen? I don't know where, right? The spiritual realm is real and I and I've heard of this, like tell me what you think about this. Um I've heard from ex Satanists and I've heard from other people that when people put on a call a Halloween costume they are giving the devil a legal right to change their identity eventually in the future. Eventually in the future, that's why people become uh, hookers and women become hookers because their their family dress them up eventually at some point. Or the son becomes a, a, a drug addict because he, he let the devil in on Halloween. You might be like, what is a holiday that is so insignificant to evil? It's just cute dress up. It's just something that people do for fun. It's just a cultural thing, right? And what does that have to do with anything? But they don't—they don't know, and they're not aware of the spiritual realities that actually happen in this in the heavenly realms. The spiritual realm is real. There are spiritual repercussions which are a lot stronger than physical repercussions. And Halloween is a big thing because that is when when many people gather together, just like how the believers gather gather together on Easter. The Satanists gather together, and not, not all Satanists wear black. Some Satanists might be wearing a suit. You don't know. You have to discern it. But they, that, that is their Easter. You never see a, a Satanist go to church on Easter Sunday. Oh, Jesus is alive. So why are Christians partaking in, in the devil's holiday? And that's what it is. And, it's, and it, I'm, not, I'm not saying this religiously. I'm saying it be, because of the spiritual repercussions that it carries. If you give the devil a legal right on this day... If you don't repent from it and turn to Jesus so that so that, that curse can be broken. Because essentially what you're doing is that you're telling the devil, Hey, I got some bait, devil. Like, come, come, um, come eat it up, you know. Eventually what you're doing, you're, you're putting a curse on yourself. You're giving the, de the demons, real demons, bait so they can come after you. You're giving the devil a legal right to mess you up. Maybe not now. Maybe he might mess you up in the future. Or he might mess somebody around you up right there might be some crazy things and you might be like where did all this come from but that's because you gave the devil a legal right that's how real the spiritual realm is and that's how real the repercussions of partaking in the devil's holiday is 
And that's why the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. Because when you have wisdom, you will not want to, you'll, you'll be afraid of the repercussions to where you'll, you'll be like, you know what? You'll, you'll have the wisdom to see the repercussions. And you'll, you'll be like, you know what? It's better for me to stay under the protection of God. Than for me to go and partake in the in the devil's holiday. So what do, what do you think about that? What do you think about about people? Sadly enough, and I have to talk about this topic because it's it's many Christians that actually think there's nothing wrong with it. Like why why do Christians even some Christians that that have received the knowledge of it being the ho the devil's holiday and and they understand why do, why do you think they do that? A, a lot of the temptation that we deal with and sin. Even if we know better, we do it because we want to be part of the crowd. You know, we see the, the the beauty or the fun that the world is having, doing the things that obviously don't please God and please Satan in return. And we're like, we want to have some of that fun. It kind of kind of like when we referenced Genesis with Eve, they saw it was yeah. pleasurable. It was good to the eye, something that gains you an extra wisdom. So if they want to be part of that. They want. They don't want to be the one that gets like left out. And they say, "Oh, like all Christians are boring. You guys can't have any fun. You guys can't <laughs> even dress up, oh, uh, just for one night and go out and some some parties to just have some good food or candy or whatever." But they want to be part of the crowd, mm. you know. That and that's kind of my story in high school. I wanted to be part of the crowd, but mm. God could just kept showing me it's not worth it. Mm. I avoided, you know, Halloween parties or parties where I knew that they were just going to lead to sin. Because I knew if I walked into that, it was gonna take me down a, a rabbit hole, a darker, mm. a darker path. Yeah. But I think with believers right. that want to participate in Halloween, that already know better, it's not worth being part of the crowd. It's not worth giving into, like, oh, I want to show them that I can't have fun with them. It's not worth it because you, like you mentioned, become like a bait towards the demons, to the devil. Or any followers of Satan who want to take you and sacrifice you toward him. If not you, maybe the children that you're walking around with. There's always somebody watching from far who is a follower of Satan. Or there's a spirit that's following around, lingering you, trying to find a way to distract you. El Señor lo reprenda. But if you are discerning this correctly and you don't want to just open doors for spirits or anything to come at you, it's best to just not participate. Yeah. And it's best to encourage those who you know are going to participate to just not even go for it at all. And sometimes they're not even believers, but if you explain this to them, they're going to be like, why? That's real? You know, there's an opportunity for you to talk about God and the gospel, share the gospel towards them. And then you just open their mind to more things. Amen. Some of the people who I've seen who have been the most radically saved is because they were going through something spiritual. And if they needed a believer to come to them to, you know, rebuke whatever was going mm -hmm. on. And they said, wow, if something this dark exists, there has to be something that's actually true and light and good. And that's how they follow Jesus Christ. Because they see and they see who he was, not only as a human being, but God in the flesh, all that he represents. And they say, this is the real thing that I should be following. This is the real thing I should be pursuing. The creator, mm -hmm. the God, God in the flesh. The one who owns all things and wants me to be united with him again in glory for all eternity. But with Halloween, it's never worth continuing in a practice just because the people say, come have fun too, for mm. just one night. 100%. Wow. Wow, that's, that's profound. The, the Holy Spirit that God has given you through Jesus Christ once you ask the Holy Spirit, show me the profound treasures found in Christ, like the word says, everything around you, even if it looks fun to the eyes, you will know what you prefer in your heart. You will get to see, you know what, the treasures in Christ are a lot more profound and a lot more appealing to my spirit. And also, why, why do we want to partake in the things of the world? If you made a conscious decision to follow Christ, with that conscious decision, did, did you think about putting to death the desires to be a part of the culture of the world? Because a lot of the cultures that are that stem from from the, a lot of cultures that are in the world have a lot of antichrist beliefs, have a lot of antichrist personas. They have a lot of antichrist morals. Well, they're not even morals, ethics. 
So we're called to be to be set apart. Like my brother said, go evangelize. If God calls you to evangelize, go evangelize. Be led by the Holy Spirit in every word you speak. And there will be fruit. The word of God never comes back void. But what, what we're talking about is we don't want to go and partake along with what is being done in that day. We go and we be light in darkness. And if you celebrated Halloween in the past, repent and turn to Jesus. And he'll break the curse off of you because... Essentially, like we said earlier, when you partake in the things of Halloween, you're opening yourself up to the devil. You're, you're letting the devil chew you up like a rag doll. And apparently I heard this place has some spooky stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. All of TSC, Utah, RGB, it was all a battleground yeah. at one point. But greater is he that lives in us and he was in the world. Woo! Luke chapter 10, verse 20. But rejoice not that these spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your that your names are written in heaven. Amen. Behold, I give you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke chapter ten verse nineteen. Remember that. Do not fear the witches; they cannot curse you. Numbers twenty three twenty three. Israel cannot come under magic. All right. God bless you all. Do me a favor. Subscribe. Hit that bell notification icon, like the video, comment your thoughts, what you think, did it edify you, did it? I want to hear your thoughts, share this video with a friend, God bless you all, I'll see you all in the next video.